Our second match of the day is also going to distance as it is, it is, as it is the Darks here that fights back, gets that map of Sunset and pushes us to the map number three that is going to be Lotus. Welcome back everybody to Valorant Challengers North America and over what we got to see was a very proactive uh, t defensive side actually on the first half for Fluffy Aimers where they're we're fighting, we're getting eight rounds in a row, but once things go the other way, they struggle to get any momentum, any rounds on their side. Yeah, really, really difficult for them, I think. You know, winning the pistol, I'm thinking, this could be over in a flash. It's 10 to 4, and I don't think Dark Zero are in deep trouble, but they dig deep and they find it. Uh, I've got to say, we did, had a great game. Ends up with, uh, yeah, sort of 23 frags there. A couple of situations where that ultimate really starts to get them value. These rounds, though, right, on defense, Dark Zero just like pushing up into traps and really struggling uh, when it came to you know, the retakes that they had to put together. Um, uh, rather on the, yeah, on the defense side, yeah, but I, I think that in, the, in this situation, like, you've got to you know, look to the veterans of, like, Corey leading the way, 25 and 18. And again, 63 first kill, first death. So a lot of heavy fighting early on in these rounds. Pancakes also having to do some lifting in that regard. I mean, they dug deep. I'm impressed. This is Dark Zero who wants that unblemished record coming out of stage two. And it was the Dark Zero that looked like they weren't going to have it for a second. Fluffy Aimers, I have to give them the kudos too for bringing this as close as it was. To get such a lead in the first place for us to even have the conversation of Dark Zero having to dig deep to take this win, to take it in overtime and to a map three. And the Dark Zero too. This was the team bringing out the... The more so unorthodox comp with the Clove and the Harbor, but uh, Stellar and the team truly cooking with this one, which is really, really exciting to see. So I don't, I we got a little quirky on the day of. It's been a lot of fun, but being able to see a little bit more from both of these teams, certainly a treat. I gotta say, I don't know how they made that Harbor and Clove work. This is just not <laughs> something that we see at all. And they were able to close it out and the resilience as well to turn this series around. Because again, for Fluffy Aimers on that first half, it was eight rounds in a row to when they have an 8-4. Then they get the pistol. It seems like everything is going in their favor, but you see slowly but surely a Dark Zero that is waking up, that is, that is getting these frags, that is getting a little bit more proactive. You see the way that they're combining this utility to in a lot of rounds set up Corey for success. And this is a way that they make us stand here right now, pushing us to the third map of Lotus. and seeing the dark shiro that we've always known and loved uber with, with corey at the top getting 25 kills everybody else supporting and even if the composition was completely different you see them having fun you see them even laughing at the end enjoying and and probably saying how did we make this one happen yeah i think like you saw the reactions on the camera at the end are probably a lot of relief there because yeah uh, going into that half time like we'd already talked about it was it was looking really really rough for them I'm just, I'm generally impressed. Like they, they showed a lot of grit there. I think they sort of, round 15 is when they start sort of piecing those rounds together. And they're not, they're all very close. They, I think they come out of like, in round 18, they, they so they lose round 19 and all of a sudden they, they have no weapons. They're on like a half by a round and they have to thrifty to sort of, you know, cover up that bump in the road in their economy and sort of keep going. Really, really uh, great stuff from them in general. And yeah, again, I, like we kind of see what the clove's supposed to do. I think that the omen composition allows you to more conveniently sort of smoke across the map and of course, uh, you know, get those one-way smokes going. We saw it like a long, we see it over at market door, right? Those are options that you have available to you there. Clove obviously seeing less of that uh, and more just smoking into those chokes from we did. So some big differences between the comps, but it also meant that <laughs> Fluffy Amy's would like walk up and contact on the A side that one round where B Dog just randomly brought an operator, it just ruined them. Yeah, you, you get to bring these little things that nobody else, is, nobody is expecting at all, especially on the side of Fluffy Amers. And the way that the both of the teams were answering back all the way to overtime, but things are looking the same way that they look on that first series area, where the last map, the decider is Lotus, and we're standing in the same position where we're, okay, the, the team that we think is going to win came back, they won that second map, can they close it out? And we talked about it before that second map as well. What were the odds that Fluffy Amers were going to close it out now? I gotta say, it gets a little bit more concerning when you lose that comeback, and now you have to win Lotus. I have a lot of, I, I have all of those questions. Do not get me wrong, and a little bit more when we're looking at this, um, at this Lotus. I don't know what Fluffy Amers is bringing out in terms of comp. It's been kind of up and down a little bit. 
we haven't seen Dark Zero play on this for almost a month. Like, there is, there's going to be a lot of questions on how this is going to be shaping up. I mean, things have been silly already. So let's jump into the Zippo Agent Select. Let's see if things are going to continue to be this way for today on this week number six. This is day one of it. And okay, no Clove Harbor, none of that the we've seen today but we do see a deadlock coming through for pancakes this is a composition that we've seen sentinels run pretty recently and obviously some tier two teams have run something similar but we're going to continue ha to have this head-to-head -head between bones and Corey on the raise now both of them i'm excited to see who's going to close it out maybe it's a puppy aimers upset let's find out yeah, let's jump into this one. Thank you very much, Dan Dryad. And yeah, we've actually seen Fluffy Abers try quite a few different compositions on, on Lotus over the last couple of weeks. It was like the, the standard like Ray's Fade comp with the Breach. Then they tried a like an Astra Deadlock with the Sky still. They were really insistent on continuing to bring this Sky in for Neptune. And clearly, he's just very comfortable there. But this, I think, is a composition that was first. Wow, well, I don't know if it was first, but you know, initially debuted by Loud, actually, uh, on this map with the, with the Deadlock. And we had the... Tadak, you know, throwing down some very funny walls, uh, kind of trolling a little bit initially. And then the next time we saw them come back with the same comp, it looked way better, like way more well rehearsed. Because attacking over on that, uh, over on the C side of the map, you can actually throw the wall, uh, throw, throw your wall over the wall into waterfall and cut it off. Uh, pretty effective, of course, when you really wanted to sweep in and, and take that side over. And if you're reactive with the wall, like we saw Corey get caught in that map of bind where he got stuck there in short, it can be quite effective. So a lot of options. Seeing a little bit more of the deadlock lately, and uh, in this series even, it's looked pretty darn good. I'm eyeing up this Dark Zero composition here, because again, when you're calling out the deadlock, looking at the difference in Sentinel, we haven't seen Dark Zero play this map in a little bit. And last time they had, they had the Cypher. Last time around, they had the Fade instead. So swapping out for the KO and the Killjoy, I think will be quite interesting. What I love about the Killjoy is that being able to lock down one site completely can be so great, especially in those post plants. And with this raise, they definitely have the aggression to push out onto site. Right away, paint shells. Make sure the angle can't quite be held. But that's where you see the utility of the deadlock come out. Grab wall gun, you completely shut that down. It does mean that Fluffy Amis can't like push up and clear rubble easily. Uh, unless they open door, thereby sort of making a bit of noise. So they're gonna be con they've contained themselves essentially on the A site for now. I have to back away, of course, go through stairs over to B. And Pancakes will sit in the back of the side for now, but it's going to be a hit over towards C. Jonah getting ready for a flood. Of course, the one little nade to push back a little bit, but Dark Zero don't really push up off of it too much. That's going to be the pivot out through the wall, and the overstand of the overstay over on C is going to get a numbers advantage for Fluffy Aimers. Dark Zero do get this B site relatively for free and can try and get a little bit more aggressive. You dog around the corner, force the peek out with the threat of that grab net, so and go to capitalize, push up around the corner. This pistol has been clinical from Fluffy Aimers, taking the first round here in our map number three of our series. And the more of this deadlock play that we see in these matches, especially on you know maps like Lotus and Vine, the better it tends to look. Our deadlock players are getting way better. Pancakes is a great reactive grab net that makes the easiest kill set up there over to We Did, who's still trying to control upper as much as he can. Game Fluffy Aim is like a very powerful uh, way to get back in on that retake. And that's going to be a frustrating one for Dark Zero immediately, right? Neptune going to be bringing that outlaw in. So that's going to make that A long push just that little bit harder. And Adder is actually yeah, going for a Marshall here. A little unconventional. Maybe hoping to find something at sea on an early peak and then rejoin the rest of the team. And we're eyeing up the Dark Zero. Losing that first round, though. They have to win this buy up, or the money is going to be a little bit messed up for a little too long. With this buy up, looking towards this B site. A lot of util to try and push out through the back. That's going to be a smoke to press everything. Thrown over at Mame. The baby door is broken, though. And Fluffy Aimers aren't going to try and let this go exactly for free. But traded shots isn't going to result in a kill off the gate. It's going to be Adder to be opening with the first kill. The Aries of all guns for Adder. Ridiculous one stuff. B-Dog last one standing now. Managed to recover that weapon. There's a wall in the way, though. Big problem. Not so much of an issue if you have an LMG, but if you're trying to win the round, well... All b can really do is try and fire through it here. Knows he can probably hold onto his weapon. His bones won't be able to reach him through that wall. So there's consolation at least for Dark Zero. Aerie's still in tow. Congratulations on your one saved ship, <laughs> your share, whatever they're able to bring on over. 
losing the round after investing some money into it hurts. And fluffy aimers now, they don't really have to invest too much into this one anyways to actually just have the better guns and the better chances to get three on the board before Dark Zero even gets a full buy-up, which is nice. And again, I... I'm going to sound like a broken record. I'm going to be talking about this deadlock utility all game long. Because again, the wall to be pushing off the potential of a re-hit. And so nice. Bones. Great way to kick off the round. Best place for that outlaw to be used here. Line armor targets on Dark Zero. Extremely susceptible to that. And now they come here over towards Tree. No one's set up here over towards Baby Door. So not like Crossfire. Fucking game is really embedded back on this site. Want to force the pistol players to run out into the open here and try and take these longer challenges. Kill confirmed. Okay. Not sure what that guiding light was supposed to be, but Pancakes is clean. Clinical. Moves into tree, takes the kill. Awkward and awkward one. Spike but Corey can't get a. through it. Able to find Neptune on the backside, though, with that paint gel. And oh, B-Dog mows mummy down. Hold on. This is getting a little dangerous. The spike, though, is dropped. And I think it's unrecoverable based on where the wall is. I'm not sure what the plan is for B-Dog, but... There's a trip in his way there. He knows it. Doesn't want to break it. Got 30 seconds. But this is about to be a long flank around. And when it's an Ares in hand, left. I don't think that's the weapon you want to try and save going into this next round. A little lurk around, and the more time that expires, Jonas 6 right knows that this flank can come from anywhere. Eyeing up the proper spot as well. Have an eye on the spike. Have an eye on the push. It's going to be who has the aim in this fight. And it's going to be Jonah. Three on the board for Fluffy Aimers. Winning out the 1v1. It was close. But no dice. Dark Zero. Still have yet to get a point. But they have the weapons going into this round finally. You see that reactive wall from Pancakes though. Caught the spike carrier. Uh, you know, in one side of it. One of those quadrants. And with the spike drop behind it. You'd have to wait for the wall to come down. So it was a long flank around there for B-Dog to try and recover it. And... Yeah, it's a lot to ask for in that situation. So three on the board for Fluffy Aimers. Looking at this next round, able to sit on a little bit of this money. Bringing up Bulldog Indo is Neptune. Full buyout for Dark Zero. Looking a little bit towards this mound. Pancakes has a util in hand. Decides to try to quarter instead. Gets tagged up. Any sort of aggression towards the C site. It's going to be pain shells to push off and dark zero. That's going to be a fast push back. Not wanting to contest that. A little flash on the way out. They're not getting too antsy, but that hasn't been a complete pull over to that site either. There is still Jonah 6. Camera over on this A side. And Adder's getting closer and closer to getting spotted out. Giving the information for fluffy aimers. That it was not where that seemed to be. Jonah won't be able to stay true though. Stellar's going to take that first kill, get on the site, get spiked down. But to see Jonah take that fight there. He's like surrounded by all of this defensive utility and those trips, by the way. I, you know, I really thought he maybe just try and wait for one of those to be cleared and sort of play off that, but he takes a challenge and comes off second best. Spike is planted and Dark Zero all sitting right out of it. There's obviously Killjoy utility already set up on the Spike location. Here. Neptune knows they're all on the other side of this door. Can't do anything about it. Can't fly through it. I have to break it now. What we did, I think, in, a, in the flash animation, goes down to one HP here, but it's only going to be Pancakes and Mummy to try and salvage the situation. It's an ugly one. I'm not going to make any bones about it. Is Mummy on the defuse, though? Okay, they are finally able no. to get him. He, okay. he was like three quarters of the way there. It, it had to be the turret being thrown Jeez, into it, of all things, to finally Gosh, find sure. this pesky omen that was sticking the defuse. A little scary once you saw they get closer and closer, but Dark Zero finally able to take him down, claim the round, get on the board. And still some pretty good guns going into this round. Fluffy Aimers with what they've built up, though. Two ultimates going into this one, and I'm eyeing up that deadlock yet again. Annihilation. Pancakes has been really good with it in that first map where we got to see him pick up this deadlock. So I'm sure if there is a dangerous push coming on through, that he can go ahead and just steal one of Dark Zero's players right out of the entire fray. Corey almost punished there. Yep, punished for trying to take the orb away. Paranoia and an aggressive pop of Fluffy Aim is out of that seaside. I'm not in a recoverable location for them just yet. Dark Zero might have also tried to get that one out of the way. Over to A very quickly though. Again, this time Adder sitting back in the side. Rather, Jonah, excuse me. Not going to be too tempted to try and play off this defensive util this time. Annihilation, pretty good. Here comes Adder. 
Nine Tanks walked straight into an alarm bot there when he tried to capitalize on the fact that he knew Ada would be saved from the cocoon, but the, the pistols are firing off here. The Sheriff play is something else, and that is a straight up flawless thrifty for fluffy aimers. It's a huge difference if Jonah 6 able to stay alive, I guess. Better positioning over on this site, holding back. Blood back on with the entire team and the Sheriff shots. Too strong. Annihilation yeah. as well. Sure, you couldn't necessarily capitalize in the moment, but getting out in weird positioning, forcing a teammate to try and save your life, and that's when Fluffy Aimers just strikes, pushing on through. That is a tough pill to swallow if Let's you're Dark Zero in that spot. Still some weapons going on to this one. But it's going to be light shields. But they do have their ultimates of that own. And I up stellar in that no command. A push out onto site can be absolutely deadly. And a really good way to kind of deal with a little bit more of this problematic utility. It's popped now. Push on through A long. Adder for the first kill. Bonesy has to tuck back around that corner now. Okay. Yeah, Nano Swarm actually forced him off that one, I'm pretty sure. Some healing given. Bones, though, definitely still worse for wear. And no one on B at all. The Dark Zero make the right call going towards this site. Everyone really clamoring to get towards A for the defenders. And C site can't even bloody see it. It's covered with so much of their deadlock and Sorry for you two. They really don't want you to go C, is what I'm understanding. This B site, though, will flank around through the door. Nobody wants to pop this. Try and get a kill on the other side. Still going to be dangerous. This is going to be Showstopper. Finally pop for Quarry, though. Quick little one around the corner. Make sure numbers don't get too out of control. Dark Zero still have the advantage, but only for a moment. Bones going to join up huge in this round. Now it's going to be Mummy in the 2v1 situation. Try and save this one. Corey's already so low, but time not in his favor. Nice attempt coming out from Fluffy Aimers, but Dark Zero going to be holding off strong at their second. Hard fought second round comes up there for Dark Zero. Fluffy Aimers uh, managing to get something done. Like there's paint shells thrown into the B side there. I think a couple kills picked up just as Corey's going for that showstopper play. Still, uh, you know, we are seeing Dark Zero trading up. It's always going to be a messy fight in the post plant on B anyway, but they get that all important round. Keeping a lid on the economy of Fluffy Amos here. They keep the guns in their hands, even after losing a large number of their players. They've got the lockdown here in this next round to play off of. They've got to respect Bones, though. Looking to do what Corey did in the previous round here. Make a play off that showstopper. A little bit of pressure back towards the C site. Does look like this one could be a little bit more free for the taking. It's only Mummy posted up towards C. We get to see that double deadlock Cypher Util over on the A site this time around. And that one might come to bite them. With Dark Zero eyeing up towards this C side. Neptune just on the other side of the door. This could be a dangerous little pop on through. And it's going to be Bones get the first kill in the round. Quickly answered though. 1v1 raids. Dark Zero have not made any much advancement on the map. All right. Here's that lockdown coming. Who kind of expected it to? Bones doesn't have a paint shell to bank off the wall. So the defenders have to respect this. We'll be forced to pull out. Play back towards Hall. Pancake's trying to slow up the attackers who will look to capitalize here. Move on in. And instantly they come. One player obviously getting detained here. That was Pancake's who knew that would happen. In order to slow the attackers up on their advance. But they do get the plant down. What a concern about late flanks here. Look at Fluffy Aim is looking over towards that B site quite intently. Making sure nobody's going to get the upper hand on them, but Dark Zero may more so along this site. Making sure they can play off of each other, or at least try to. Pancakes is going to find Adder alone. We did already so low on health. Enemy remaining. And Rolling Thunder committed. Mummy now 1v3, 1v2. And Corey to take him out. Dark Zero slowly but surely patching up that lead that Fluffy Amers was able to get on them. Being, being able to find out this attack a little bit more and more. And Fluffy Amers' econ finally not looking so hot. Yeah, it's definitely been broken by now. That was a huge rolling thunder from B-Dog coming up at basically the perfect time. Dark Zero sweep back into that seaside just as Fluffy Amers were looking to get a foothold. And now, yes, they work with pretty little. And even the ultimates that they've that they built up aren't necessarily a shock and all ones you'd like to see. Seek is important, obviously, for Neptune and Jonah Six can convert on one of those kills. Guardian, Guardian, Judge here for Mummy. Yeah, he'll be playing set up over on that B site. Corey's already opened up the account, though, going down to 16, taking two with him. 
Forget that neon game from Cory game number one. This raise, these pushes, this aggression has been great. And the paint shells to be clearing out that corner, neon could yeah. never. A little flash around the corner, not pushing off of it though. Eyed up this baby door, knowing that there's probably someone on the other end. And that's Mummy Judge in hand. They'll gotta break this door. Mummy can come flying through with that weapon. And Fluffy Aimer is starting to get a little antsy, not really wanting to let them get away with it for free. It's not gonna be Mummy with the kill though. It's Dark Zero. All of the momentum. It's just these. Scoreboard of red going on out to tie up the score. Four to four here. Great job from Dark Zero. I've got to say as well, like on a round like this, you've got to be careful of someone like Mummy sitting in the corner with a judge. So Stella checks that. He clears it uh, with that Molly. But the dog timing was quite good. Fluffy M is realizing just how far up Dark Zero had pushed. They look to try and go for a bit of a fight there. But again, it's that weapon advantage. I think I've got two guardians and a judge to work with and then not a lot else. They didn't use any ults in that previous round though. So they are getting to the point where they can just suppressing. press those ults and try and take the round away. It's on the back of the strength of those abilities. And you'll notice that Adder's actually setting up here in rubble, even playing off the contact of his turret with the spike left well back towards spawn still. Play a little bit more of the map this time around. Nobody's biting so far from Fluffy Gamers. You don't need to. Wall in the way will make sure nobody's going to push out farther onto that site. Because now Bones just going to be tucking in close. They try and push towards this B site. Spike finally recovered. Going to be in Stellar's hands. And with nobody pushing up towards that A, how could they with that wall? Going to start slowly but surely making their way towards that A site. Check out. Neptune there just didn't really have too much help, unfortunately. Caught out there is Dark Zero. Find a really important opening. That's what they were kind of setting up for in this round. Playing a bit more of a default setup. Okay, get look over on the side. What a timing from Pancakes. There were just from the smoke in a haze of red. 30 seconds left. Bloodlust and blood both falling. Fire and have a showstopper here. Now adding to it. Pancakes takes Weeded out. Here comes Corey, though. Does deal with the offending deadlock. But it's traded back instantly. We're doing this again. These teams are winning their rounds. All in clumps. This Fluffy Aim is break back in and still don't have to use too much alt wise. You, you say something? <laughs> Sorry. Dark Zero, they had a good thing going, switching it up. This slower play coming on out. Could have been absolutely everything, but even after the wall fell, pancakes, getting two, getting three before finally being taken down. And Fluffy Aimer is able to respond at that point. So Dark Zero kind of trapped onto site and couldn't capitalize. Now this is a Fluffy Aimer's four out of their five alts that they can make use of in this round. So Dark Zero, they have to be so careful. They can suppress just for a little bit of information onto the one site. But if they try to push towards C, yeah. we can see that deadlock util push up over there as well. Corey that wants to test it. Checks to see if there's anyone playing close. And the guiding light. Will keeps in defenders here over at that C site. Now, wall here remains for a large chunk of the round. Eventually, though, it's going to fall. I think Adder is sort of banking off that. Pancakes is playing with a judge on the other side of it. Adder got a little bit too close to the sun there. Pancakes wants that rifle now to be recovered. And he gets it. Surely the deadlock's not sitting behind her wall with the judge. Surely. Well, all that chaos is happening, though. Dark Zero will finally be able to push through the utility. Oh, left over on the C site. And be able to get this plant down on site. Corey forced it back up. Can't quite take the aggressive angle that he wanted to. And Seeker Spot from Neptune. Not really going to get too far. Only the ones towards the back site give out a little information. They already knew somebody was there. That's going to be an impactful alt, though. Annihilation coming on out. Mummy. Remaining. What? Oh my gosh. Get oh down my like gosh, a goon. That was pretty nasty stuff. Yeah, the Annihilation there, of course. Uh, pretty scary ability to throw in there for Pancakes. The Seek is, like you mentioned, giving that information over about the player position at the back of the site. Okay, money now looking a little bit grim for Dark Zero. Two rounds left in the half here. Still a competitive one. Buffy Amos again have this tendency, right? Starts really strong on that defense side. Getting up to eight rounds here would be the same as what we saw on Sunset. Goes 
Free ultimate posted up. Last round to get that round win. But look like they are strong without. Dark Zero now have two to play a round of their own. Stellar with that null command. Be huge. Is there eyeing up the Seasight right again? Could be a good way to get past that utility. And nobody's posted up on the site itself. And said, Mummy, fully more towards Waterfall, playing quite a passive angle. Looks like Fluffy Aimer's already kind of posted up to play for a retake situation. The smoke comes out. But this is going to be a Dark Zero that pushes on through it. No care in the world. Smokes are there. Util coming on through, but Corey's already on the site. And he's testing the waters over at Waterfall himself. Three players grouped up there. Now they're looking to make the push right about now. We did look to be ready for it. That was paranoia for the Halls player, but he rounds that corner and Paycase was holding it. Second flash thrown out, and now Null Command going to be deployed. Most of that Util are already expended for the defenders here, and they are confident in the retake. Another wow. clean one here for Fluffy Aimers. Not just even for the half. That's going to be more than enough. Seven. Looking strong. Still another opportunity Last to get round another round the under half. their belt before their own attack. And great call of the no command. The utility, they had already pushed out. Like, Fluffy Avers had pushed out onto site at that point. And the no command, you're stopping them from what? That last little bit of util. Maybe it could have been a little bit better spent earlier on. But I'm looking back as well. And that's even... A pancake that's dry swinging an angle and getting these kills. Fluffy aimers again. Their aim has been good today. This is a team that once they get comfortable, it starts to look pretty okay. They're going to have the information guiding light to call out that there are some members of Dark Zero posted up towards this A long. Damn. Not going too fast, though. But Neptune, if he swings this angle, could be absolutely deadly for Dark Zero. And they're not smoking stairs at all. Moving up as a unit. At some point, they're going to get spotted. Neptune now knows about it. There's that smoke. Door open up in towards tree. That's going to be clear with the paranoia. No one standing in there at all. Jonah just anchoring there from upper. Adder eventually sees Neptune come at him. Mineral theft getting popped immediately. There's going to be bones emerging. Here's the showstopper. He's going to be avoided for the time being by B-Dog, but eventually he's got to meet his maker. Jonah into drop. And that will be a fluffy aim is eight round half yet again. Switching sides. Seen this story before. Fluffy Aimers up in rounds before Dark Zero able to push back. Of course, Dark Zero. Again, we do. We, again, it goes back to this pistol. Gotta see something good. Last time they lost this, and we're still able to make that comeback here. We'll have to see if they can do it once again. Of course, getting just the pistol out of the way could just be nice for them. Trying to make it past this Fluffy Aimers team, though. Fluffy Aimers can make their way onto site. Something like Pancakes and this wall can do such a good job in completely shutting down one of those retake angles. Or even just right away as part of the execute. So that's going to be something, especially here on this pistol round, that might be a little bit difficult for Dark Zero to deal with. Still, you got to be feeling so good fighting eight defensive rounds on a map like Lotus. That's a huge boon. Ordinarily, it's the kind of map again like Haven. You can really stretch those defenders thin across these three sites. Interesting, that cam that sort of leads them out here into long. They are spotted, though, as Stella tucks back into tree. Corey's going to get ready here to set up for what may be a crossfire. Flashed in. Everybody disperses. Bone's not going to be able to avoid that paint shell so easily. He has to back up, throws one of his own to give him the space to run. Great response to that utility coming out. And not too much gained over on A. Mummy is going to be lurking towards the seaside. Adder's not giving up mound and finally calls out a little elbow there. There's going to be three now from Fluffy Aimers. Posted up, but Spike is really still towards that A side and could catch, potentially catch somebody going on in. Fluffy Aimers, they are committing a lot to the C push. This is a committed fake. And I up the two Sentinels still pushing up on this A site and Stellar has left. This site is completely for free. Yeah. 30 seconds left. And elsewhere, you can catch these rotates. A pistol here would be so huge for Fluffy Aimers. Oh, now Stella does get drawn out of formation. Hang on. Into the crossfire. <laughs> Neptune is there to ready to receive him. This is all but done. There's a deadlock wall in the way of stairs. Tags are just trying to get some ult orbs. All this fight is happening towards this B-side C-Link. And here's Pancakes and Jonah. 
just chilling. They got the wall out. They got the util. They've not felt pressured at all. And mummy towards his a long angle. Throw the paranoia around the corner. Just comes a swing from the senties. What a pistol round from fluffy aimers. All of that chaos towards BC side. Such a committed fake. And the spike over on the other end. DZ forced to respond on the opposing end because you also just can't let them flank you for absolute free. And Fluffy Aim is still able to find the better equation of that fight. This will be the buy up now. Doesn't look like they're going to invest the heaviest into it. More so looking at the specters of it all. Dark Zero. Last time they, they tried to force. I'm glad that they're not going for this time. I'd like to see them have full rifles in hand for round 15. A little bit of running up with those specters. Still yeah. very viable. Dark Zero aggressively staked their claim over to Rubble. I don't really know if the, uh, the aimers are going to make their lane on that part of the map. Okay, here comes the Trailblazer. No trips to worry about at least, but still that deadlock, uh, rather the useful from the KJ, something that does require some respect. Bones backing out there. I don't know if he really got what he came for, because it's not as if like the, the way to A is open either. Dark Zero is still posted up in these relatively forward positions. Corey there wants to force Drona back even further. Not going to try and fall for the oh same God. trick. Lucky aimers. Not going to necessarily let them have this positioning for free and Stellar gets forced out of the position. This is just a reverse of what happened last time around though. Spike posted up towards the C side despite all the pressure over on A. There is one member the wall. of DZ still there. Just around the corner, though. Smoke's out. 30 seconds left. There's a classic right click. Lucky Aimer's not going to contest. That's the push out over towards B. We're messing around with every site today. 20 and seconds Dark left. Was... They got to commit. It's going to be a, start, a tough one here, but Dark Zero with only what, two players left down. now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> All right, confidence brimming again, but we saw the same thing on Sunset, so I'm not getting ahead of myself here, but Buffy Aimer's are looking extremely good. 10 to 4 now. Again, coming onto a pretty comfortable bonus that Outlaw in hand. It's gotta be now. Dark Zero need to hold this Juggernaut. Literally now or never. They had to come back last map around, finding themselves in a tricky position again in this game number three. And Fluffy Aimers, this deadlock, like this whole composition they have is a little bit more comfortable. They're playing up against something that looks a little bit more, more typical. This is fine. A lot of util spent already towards this A side. Being able to consistently get this A alt orb has been really nice for Dark Zero to try and hey. consistently get their alts online. But that's getting traded out for the alt orb over on the opposing end of the map too. Spike posted up over towards C. As Pancake's looking to make some noise. If this can... Oh, goodness. If you can get that kill, that's going to be great momentum into the round. And of course, Outlaw is going to bring true momentum already for Fluffy Aimers. And now this forward positioning for Stella doesn't look nearly as solid. Oh, no. Falls back into the crosshair. Pancakes really having that patience pay off for him. And that's basically a cracked wide open. I want to point out, this is the bonus here for Fluffy oh, Aimers. Yes. He got so much done with this outlaw. And now they can trade that up into some even better weapons. There were two rifles dropped by Rubble. That is so low. Important kill to take. He'd need another one to give his team much hope in this round. Oh, and Bones comes on the other side. The running gun works him down. And now to B... Is where the scrutiny is. One vandal, one judge in the hands of Dark Zero to try and salvage any part of this round, the round they were supposed to win. Rip up as well. Playing right over on this site. Corey trying to clear all the angles. The second he pokes around the corner, that's going to be a pancakes yet again. And B-Dog with the judge. I don't think this is one that can be done. That's going to be the first kill delivered to him. And now the close range for the long range fights. And get cast around the corner. Fluffy aimers now on 11. Dark Zero probably broke going into this now. That was the investment and they couldn't take advantage. Yeah, they got a force though. I mean, they're basically going to be forcing for the rest of the map at this rate. Yeah. No choice but to buy up. But yeah, losing the pistol was pretty catastrophic. It's a seven round streak here for Fluffy aimers. And that's just... You know, they come into that round with a couple of Spectres here. Like, Dark Zero really had that strong weaponry. It's the Outlaw that is their undoing. And, you know, and they're still going to be susceptible to it to some degree on this round. Two players, lightly armored. 
Fluffy aimers. Outlaw again, this time in the hands of Mame. Posted up towards the sea site in case there was a little bit of a peek coming out from Dark Zero. But right away, it's going to be back up. Only a little bit of util from this KJ. And it's not going to stop this onslaught of Fluffy aimers whatsoever if they want to try and push out onto this site. And that's going to be the showstopper. Satchel on in. Going to see the feet. And Weedon gets absolutely deleted. Fluffy aimers, they got the sight. They got the advantage. Mummy's gonna get, be able to get this spike down. Dark Zero is gonna be forces up to try and get any part into this. And losing this round is gonna be match point there. Fluffy aimers, so close to getting the upset. They can get it to 12. Surely they can close it out from there. And this util to push Dark Zero, uh, like what can they do? Well, again, uh, you've got double Sentinel and you're in a post plant. So this is really where your comp starts to thrive. So much. Util set up on that site. You can see it all on the minimap there. So even if Dark Zero can move up there, anytime they make a wrong move, they're match getting caught point. in a trip or a sonic sensor. And here's the match point. Dark Zero, of course, have to force up again. It's going to be a pretty similar looking round in terms of that weaponry. I want to call out Pancakes for just having an absolutely lights out series across the board. This fluffy aimers squad and this Colleen has just been strong in general. We've gotten to see some really nice things coming out from Fluffy Aimers this stage. And of course, your IGLing sometimes, you know, kills don't necessarily go your way. That's gonna be uh, for your teammates. But the impact that he's had throughout this series and this map has been instrumental. A lot of util already. Donisek's not gonna be able to push up quite through that A. It's gonna be weeded on the one angle, Corey on the other. Gets the first kill to be opening up the round, paint shells to further push back. That's a great opening pick from the down team. Those Guardians are a decent option here on a thrifty round for Dark Zero to control that long line. But Ada can't get it done in on this occasion. Now we're in a 4v4, but this side is again going to be open and it's again going to be covered with all this utility, but it's a play that snuck in the waterfall. Fluffy Game is not aware of it here. And Feedog was able to make use of that surprise factor. Ultimately, though, it can only be a trade. And Stella has to wait here in halls. But that wall and waterfall is going to be a problem. It needs to be removed. A little util. Try and push back, but a little too late and Spike goes down. 3v3 for any attempt to Dark Zero to stay in this. That's going to be Seeker's pop. Annihilation soon to follow. Dark Zero, if they try and push on forward, they're going to be instantly down in number. They have to have that respect. A shot through waterfall, the information, and that's going to be one captured shooting him out, but if you shoot towards him, you're losing time to try and push out onto the site. Sometimes oh, you just no. gotta let him go. Corey down. Only two left One to try and keep Dark Zero in this. Pancakes yet again, the step up. Four A on the round. 13-4 for Fluffy Aimers to take the series, take down the one huh. undefeated team. We don't talk about that one. What a statement match. That was incredible. Yeah, Ooh, amazing showing there from Fluffy Aimers. Showing again, like once you're in a post plant, how devastating the double sentinel setup is. And they did a great job. I mean, those eight defense rounds is really what paves the way for them here. That outlaw buy in that second half. I think bonus, they bonused into it. That was very, very potent. Getting those two kills and really opening the map up here. Quicker game than we thought, Dryad, based on how back and forth this series has been. Yeah, especially for this map, we saw something similar for Dark Zero when they play against Oxygen, but for this one, we didn't really know what the what this Lotus was going to bring to us, and it was just a fluffy aimers completely dominant. I gotta say, I got scared when I saw the 10-4 again. I was like, is, is this happening? But, but it doesn't ha it only happens one time per series, and it's a fluffy aimers with a so well deserved when we talked about it the only undefeated team we talked about how much this this match matter for dark zero to be that team that is dominant that is consistent all across Sierra. but fluffy aimers as we mentioned they had a different story to tell and i love to see them succeed you see how they were celebrating every single one of these rounds that was such an incredibly insane match i'm thinking back to our predictions at the beginning and fluffy aimers with the gift like they're not aware. And you know what? We weren't. We weren't. This was absolutely an incredible match coming out from the team. The compositions that they've cooked up, everybody showing up on the day, and how well they were able to execute off of that utility and kind of just set up has been really, really nice and backing it up with some really solid shooting across the board. Even before they got picked up by Fluffy Aimers, there was members of the team that you have to talk about. This is a team that... Why aren't they winning more? And taking down Dark Zero, the undefeated team, 
now have fluffy aimers end off their stage two at a four and two record i think is such a great turnaround and really considering how they are playing today so well deserved and i have to yet again call out pancakes because talking about the deadlock like all series long even when we didn't get to see it second half and pancake not just the util but the kills as well the 4k in that final round this deadlock was a tough one to crack and dark zero didn't have an answer pancakes amazing i mean it's just the, the little things right the little things that you're able to bring over that you don't really know what to expect you know how the deadlock works you know you're probably gonna have to still watch those angles and still with the pancakes i was watching those angles and also so shooting down everybody that I was that was coming across that. There's like an unreal thrifty round win there as well on that first half, I think, when uh, you know, we saw Fluffy Amos defending. It was all just sheriffs or something like that. And they uh, had an incredible retake against a fully bought. It was a flawless thrifty round from them uh, over on that A side. I think like rounds like that in general are just, you know, if you can pick up one or two of those over the course of a game and just have like a really, uh, a, you know, a really great start on defense, like with those eight rounds, then... They are, you know, they're going to run away with the game. So, got to hand it to them. They look very quality. I would say that I feel like Dark Zero at times didn't quite look themselves today. I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, I do want to give credit, of course, to Fluffy Amos, but, you know, uh, pretty quiet uh, last map, I think, there for we did. Not able to get too much done. Um, and, you know, Stellar, obviously, on that sunset map, you know, he came in with the harbor, very back and forth. Uh, some interesting picks here coming out from the side of Fluffy Amos. I'm glad they're inventing this has worked. And I don't know about that, uh, you know, that... that sunset comp here from Dark Zero. Maybe we'll see it again. We can put it to the test. Yeah, we're definitely going to see more of them. And still for Dark Zero, they win every single match. But the one that we just got the chance to see against Fluffy Amers is still a pretty good season for them. They, they should be happy with everything that they've done. All the all the wins that they've, they've been able to get. But Fluffy Amers, this is their moment. We have an interview with one of the Fluffy Amers players. But we're going to send it to a break and we'll be right back.
Fluffy gamers, if you missed it, they got the win against Dark Zero. And now it is time for the post-match interview. This time around, I'm joined by Mummy to talk about not only the win today, which is a pretty big one, but as well everything of the evolution of Fluffy gamers. Mummy, first of all, congratulations on this win. The first thing that I want to ask you here is a little bit about the evolution because you just took down that team that was the only undefeated team in Challengers. Yeah, I mean, it feels good. Uh... The team really wanted this win. I mean, we were looking at the stats and everything and like, we should have beat Winthrop, but we had to close this one out to give us ourselves a chance in playoffs. But the team has been evolving pretty well. We feel comfortable and we're just hoping that this was enough uh, to get us into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it is a pretty good win to get and, and people and the teams don't really know what's going to happen for playoffs, but I feel like you yeah. guys look pretty good. I want to talk a, a, about what we saw on the other side for Dark Zero. Were you expecting that composition of the Harbor and the Clove on second map? Because we were not. Yeah, I mean, they definitely took us for a spin with that. We were more looking towards like a neon, like fast play, but uh, the Harbor Clove was like something out of left field. And I think... For us, because we feel like we have a really good grasp of Sunset, uh, it took us for a spin on the attack side. We really didn't uh, progress as comfortably as we should have. Uh, there were some situations that we could have played a lot better with the versus the Harbor, but overall I think uh, it's a map that we're going to look at and just refine some things if we ever run into something like that again. And is it harder uh, at all for you to reset after that second map where you almost had it, you lose it in that overtime, it goes to map three and you gotta make sure that, you know, the match is still gonna be yours? So, we definitely were, were you know, weren't trying to beat ourselves up after that loss. Like, we definitely felt like we were in control this whole series and we definitely felt like we should have won Sunset even with the comp that they showed us. But the third map came and you know, we practice really hard for this. Uh, we're pretty comfortable on some, on uh, Lotus as well. And we just said to ourselves, you know, it's zero, zero. Like, let's just reset. Let's keep the momentum going. We know we're ahead right here. Just play our game. Uh, Pancakes and, and Shinobi, they definitely have a great connection with each other in trying to keep their mental together. And it keeps everyone else uh, locked in as well. So uh, props to them and the team for keeping uh, their heads on straight. And the last question that I have for you is, you know, you went against a team that beat Oxygen, you beat Dark Zero, and now you're the team that beat the best team that we used to have. So it's like kind of a weird, we don't really know who's the best Challengers team. Do you right. think you're in that top three? How competitive do you think Challengers is looking for what is going to be playoffs? Oh, for sure. Uh, our team is, is very confident right now. We feel like we can shoot better than any of these teams that are in Challengers. And also, the challengers compositions right now, like all, all these players are great and everyone is, is giving it their 100%. You know, everyone wants to make franchising. Everyone is changing things up, uh, trying to see what works. And I think that's really great for the, for the scene, you know, just having some type of evolution with comp and uh, meta on these different maps, giving different looks because you could do so much in Valorant, you know, it's very wide. Um, and I think that our coach, Shinobi, and again, Pancakes, our IGL, they have a really good mind for what they want to do on the maps. And, uh, you know, with my experience playing under FNS, I feel like I can give them uh, good guidance on, on how to refine that process. So uh, I think we're definitely a top contender. And hopefully this was enough for us to make playoffs so that we can show uh, what we've been working on. Well, one thing is for sure is that you guys look amazing today and it was such a well-deserved victory. I'm happy to see Fluffy Gamers continue to succeed. This is everything Thank that you. we have for the interview, though, Mummy. Thank you so much for joining us. Now it is time that we bring back our analyst to close out today, which has been a day of a lot of three maps, a lot of going the distance, a lot of, well, we got one prediction right, the other one was wrong, and I'm okay with it here. So am I, and I just have to say, if we don't see Fluffy Amers now in playoffs, like competing, it's going to be an absolute travesty, honestly, because what we got to see coming out from them today, this doesn't necessarily look like a fluke win coming out from them. You could say what you want about any composition coming out from Dark Zero or anything about this week six. When you're looking at Fluffy Amers, just how they're aiming, how they're working together, we better see more of them very soon. 
Yeah, I, I really hope so, because uh, today in the window they got today, Uber is not something that anybody has been able to do, not even Oxygen, the team that we always put at the top, they lost against Dark Zero, and now Fluffy Gamers win, so the challenge uh, continues to be uh, this unknown of who's going to be the best, who's going to represent North America when it comes to Ascension. Yeah, look, I mean, looking back, right, we saw Oxygen obviously have a bit of a tussle there against Tassad, and then the more recent game i think that you know dark Zero might want to go and have a look at the comp that they brought out on bind right i think that's the most glaring map from that series and mm. everyone now we are of course looking towards challenges playoffs and ultimately uh that opportunity to represent in ascension remember it's your top two teams uh from playoffs that go there now this really like uh, it puts fluffy aimers up now in third place and in second in their group so gives them pretty favorable seating potentially for uh you know the challenges finals uh, and we're starting to see some teams now, again, fall into that relegation zone. None of them really uh, involved in today's matches outside of SAD, who um, have a decent at least like four and against in terms of map record. But falling to two and four for them is, yeah, it definitely, you know, puts them in a bit of a state of stress, I think. They're going to have to fight their way uh, off that bottom of the ladder. Yeah, there, there's teams like we're hearing from Fluffy and we're saying, yeah, we don't really know what's going to happen, surely, and hopefully it's going to be enough for playoffs. But it continues to be this mystery of who's going to turn up for these specific matches for the last matches that we have especially because we, we had just had day one of week six but we have day two and day three i think we get the chance to look at the schedule and how it's gonna look like because we have other teams that are hungry for those wins sierra and you know i'm, I'm looking forward to that last day i think it's gonna be as chaotic as it gets but tomorrow is also looking pretty interesting <laughs> i mean when you're eyeing up that last day is as chaotic as it gets Welcome to all the Valorant you want to be kicking off your weekend. That's going to be a three match day. So I hope oh, you guys yeah. are in yep. very good in tomorrow. The YFP versus TSM match should also be a lot of fun because TSM, again, they have such strong players, but this YFP team has looked really good just across this board. I'm so excited for all these matchups. MXS versus M80 also going to be a cooker. And Uber, I got to pass this one over to you or else I'm just going to list off every single matchup and why it's awesome because this is going to be an awesome Sure, match. I mean, <laughs> again, there's like tons of implications amongst those, right? Core have a chance to try and get off the bottom here with a win against Winthrop, which, you know, uh, would mean that they would, the head-to-head -head would probably put Core ahead of, of them in the overall sort of standings, not sort of looking at Group A, Group B respectively here because that's, you know, what is going to determine you know, your circuit points and also your eligibility to fall into that promo relegation tournament and uh, and be booted out because the bottom two, steam, bottom two teams overall are uh, given the flick. Elsewhere, I think like YFP have a chance to go to, you know, to four and two as well, um, you know, with a win over TSM. Definitely, uh, they've been really good over this stage. So great games. That July 11 year, market calendar is going to be a banger uh, for Tier 2 Valorant. Yeah, I mean, I know you guys like Valorant, so you need to get you need to get ready for that one. Three matches in one day, but that does mean that tomorrow we're only gonna have one match. I think today, though, nonetheless, was amazing. We got to see Oxygen push to that map number three. They were able to close it out, and Fluffy Gamers they get the upset over Dark Zero. A very good day one of week six. We're gonna see how the match that we have only won that we're going to have tomorrow ends up turning out. It's going to be YFP against TSM. And we'll be right here at the same time, same place. I'll see you then. One enemy remaining. Player standing. One enemy remaining. One enemy remaining. Enemy remaining. Remaining. 
my own. Get up. One enemy remaining. Ten seconds left. Planted. One enemy remains. One enemy remaining. One enemy remaining. Three down. 